Welcome to DeFi, the podcast making the most important projects in DeFi easy to understand and accessible to all. Every episode, we sit down with a team who are building to solve important issues of our modern society. This week, we're speaking to Li Jiang, the founder of Harmony, a high throughput blockchain aiming to scale Ethereum applications cross chain. Cool, man. Yeah, great to have you on the podcast today. So, Lee, you are the founder of Harmony, right? I'm the CEO of Harmony. But yes, I joined the project very early on as well. Amazing. So who started Harmony then? I guess that's a good place to start. Yeah, so the story of Harmony actually started with a group of friends in Silicon Valley. So it was started by Steven, who was actually coming out of Apple and had started his own startup before that. And... Actually, in the beginning, it was just uh, a group of us who would, we would get together every week on Thursday and just talk for four hours, you know, have some drinks, have some food, ramen at this local place in the Bay Area. And over when was time, this? When was this? 2017. It was also during the, uh, you know, the ICO era, a lot of activity, a lot of, you know, hype, I would say, around the space. But we really, we really saw, even at that time, the scaling issues within Ethereum. And we, we knew that this space was going to be big with lots of applications. And so that, that was when Steven started first working on the white paper to, to bring scalability, to have a new architecture that is uh, sharded and proof of stake. Basically, the, some of the core concepts within Ethereum 2.0, but putting it into production within a very short period of time. And then we launched our mainnet in um, 2019 and went on. Binance IEO in 2019. Yeah, that's been part of the journey. And now, of course, engaging with all the partners, including you guys, SakeDAO, and a lot of people within the Ethereum community, helping everyone go multi-chain. I think that's a big, big topic for for this entire community, actually. All the applications, and making it accessible to all the chains, all the ecosystems. For sure, man. Yeah, and, and we can definitely dig into that. We'd be also super curious to hear your thoughts on some of that. I guess before that, it'd be super interesting, I think, for, for people to know what led you up to that journey of, you know, having this weekly meetup in, in Silicon Valley and how you kind of got into the space in the first place would be, it'd be really interesting to hear. Yeah, well, so I have a long crypto story, as I think many people do. So my roommate actually uh, in 2012 was telling me about Bitcoin and then 2013 was when actually there were a lot of startups in, in the Bay Area founded around uh, Bitcoin for remittances. And that was the early use case. Coinbase actually started around then. I went to a startup demo day and, and saw, I think, them or a few other exchanges at the time uh, pitch. And then 2014, my friend actually, Vitalik was in San Francisco raising for uh, Ethereum. And my friend actually invited me to see him speak. And, you know, of course, like all these things, it, it's funny looking back, like, it didn't really register in the same way at at the time. Right. He was just a dude. And yeah, yeah. (laughs) Like ideas are, there's a million ideas a day, you know, in the Bay area and like, what's this Ethereum thing. And so, but of course, over time, more and more people in our community, like my, my social network started talking about it and finally just reading and learning more about the technology and really seeing how it's, it's just such a new platform that can touch everyone in the world with billions of people. You don't need a central entity to kind of like do growth marketing or growth hacking, or what have you, right? It's just open and permissionless again to everyone, billions of people in the world. And I think that we are just starting to fulfill some of that promise, right? Giving opportunities to literally every single person on the planet who can access the internet to either create applications, create NFTs that, that value their work, that value their time, or, you know, even if they're playing a game, now they can be, uh, there's play to earn projects all over. So I think that eventually, you know, all those ideas formed within, within the Silicon Valley meetup group. Yeah. I mean, in the beginning, we, we didn't know all these things, right? The last three years has been such a crazy learning journey that it's been amazing. But yeah, in, in the beginning, of course, we were talking about decentralized Airbnb and decentralized Uber, you know, it was just add the word decentralized in front of every tech company. And, and that was, that was the early days. But now I think we've definitely found very specific use cases, very specific product market fit for crypto in general. Yeah. And, and I mean, how would you describe that product market fit? Yeah, I think each category, you know, obviously you guys are very deep in DeFi, like bringing blockchain is a technology that, that is, I think, how should I say it? Probably superior to, um, 
some of the existing platforms, right? It is open, it is accessible, it's composable, which means that it can be upgraded and innovated on very quickly. And that's one of the things like, I think crypto moves at 100x the speed of some of the other industries. And it, it will move only faster, not slower in the future, right? As more people get in, as more projects kind of collaborate with each other, definitely uh, like decentralized finance, NFT has their own, each kind of category has their own community of adoption and product market fit right now. And that's what's exciting, right? We're able to touch different people and, you know, DAOs, which we are currently in Denver right now with Meta Cartel Conference, all the DAO folks come from it in a more um, open governance form. And, you know, we, and you're attracting people who are maybe came from government or grassroots, like social organizing to come into crypto. So it's, it's really, the product market fit is really for almost every, you know, all kinds of folks uh, who have come in for their own passions and interests. And that's what makes it such a beautiful ecosystem. Yeah, for sure, man. And, you know, I guess one sort of thing that we, we're trying to do on this podcast is to give projects a chance to define their product market fit and to, to yeah, to explain it in a way that is, is kind of accessible. I think that now with so many kind of projects in the space working on, you know, L2s or just separate, you know, kind of ETH killer no. uh, blockchains and everything, you know, it, it's easy to, to get kind of lost in the noise. And so I, I guess a, a kind of, I think an interesting way that we could ask that is if you were, say, at a dinner party, for example, okay. and you were to explain to someone who didn't have a, a lot of knowledge about, about what blockchain is, I mean, how would you, what would you say? And then, you know, how would you kind of explain it, the context of, of what Harmony is trying to do? Yeah. Well, I think, you know, I think the ba basics of blockchain to me is it's a open platform that gives anybody the chance to, whether it's deploy an application or to interact with one that permission without central entity, without even central centrally coordinated. So it opens up so many possibilities for people to participate in the world economy on online. And it's and it's more fair, open, right? There are no 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 one says you, you can get a loan or not based on any factor that may not be fair to you. And and so I think that's what's exciting about blockchain as a whole. I, I think for us at Harmony, right, to summarize kind of if there are a few things you, you want to remember is we're designed to be scalable in our architecture meaning you know we are using sharding and proof of stake so that even as the network demands get higher we can create more nodes more shards to handle that uh, demand so we're really designed to grow for the next 10 years 20 years with the with the industry as a whole the second thing is of course we're ethereum compatible like you talked about ETH killers before, we actually feel like we're we're not that. We're more working with the entire ecosystem and allowing, you know, Ethereum applications or applications on in, any EVM chain to scale with us um, as well. And we really think there will be multi-chain applications. We'll do even multi-chain governance. Figure out how to, you know, take the governance tokens from all their chains that they're deployed on. And then I think the last thing is we're building bridges to all the all the chains, right? Right now we have Ethereum, BSC, Terra, Shuttle Bridge, Any Swaps, Bitcoin, and Polygon Bridge. So we think that like we will continue to be part of this interoperability a story, connect to all the major blockchain ecosystems, and even provide developers and users easier experience to you know use blockchain without even having to worry about exactly which chain they're on, which network. And that's something that that's core to us as well. So yeah, I think I think those are some of the summary. Of course it's a it's a very deep topic, right? And at a dinner party, you know, how much right. can, you, can you say? But uh, yeah, I think those are so, some of the highlights. For example, if you were trying to explain it at a high level this hypothetical person, would you say, you know, you'd explain blockchain technology, say these are the potential implications mm -hmm. and what we're trying to do you know these are the challenges you know right. ethereum's had these scaling challenges and da, 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 da. And what we're trying to do at harmony is to create interoperability between all of these different layers like i mean is that how you would summarize it i think yeah i think for us uh, as you mentioned right it, the, the blockchain industry is going to grow 10 times if not 100 times more in the next few years and so harmony is there to help these applications scale help users 
access applications, very affordable, uh, using a very fast chain, and then of course being interoperable so that the end developer and the end user experience can be much better in terms of being able to access the technology in a very simple and intuitive way. And we're also doing some innovation on the uh, user front with we're actually building a wallet that is an on-chain wallet that doesn't require seed phrase and can just be signed in using Authenticator with you know six six word authenticator that everyone has already with proven security. So we're thinking along the lines of, you know, bringing the next million or the next 10 million people in, into crypto. Right. Crypto is still very small, right? There, There's maybe a few million wallet addresses, but how many people is that really? Like it, it may not even be a million, you know, core users. And so we're thinking about how to bring on to 10x that, I mean, you know, 10 million is still not that much in right. the grand scheme of things. So. Right. And, and, you know, today, if there was a, a new user or someone who was familiar with Ethereum, maybe they had a MetaMask wallet or whatever, you know, how, how could they go about interacting with Harmony? Right. Well, uh, MetaMask is, uh, is a great product that, that is the gateway for a lot of people. So we are MetaMask compatible. The only thing you need to do is change the chain ID so that you can run, you can use the application on Harmony Network. I think a good demonstration is uh, sushi swap. So they, 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 not only is it very easy, they made it like one click button. You, you go on the sushi website, you click which network you select, you know, one of the 20 networks that they're on and you, you're off and running. Right. So that's, a, that's an easy way to, to get started. Awesome. And so, you know, they can go onto sushi and basically use harmony as the protocol and, and they can swap at low cost. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Low cost and low speed. So it, it really is a good user experience. Amazing. And I guess one of the talking points right now is is kind of the, the trade-off between speed and security and decentralization. And, you know, yesterday we kind of had, I think it was Solana and also maybe Arbitrum, Arbitrum I think, yeah. Yeah, had, some, had some issues. And I mean, you know, what's your kind of view on, on, on Harmony's approach to decentralization? Mm -hmm. Right. So we, we want full decentralization as much as on the scale of Ethereum and Bitcoin, right? I think those are probably the networks that have the most for a long time. And right now the network has a, a thousand nodes and 800 of those are run by external validators. So eventually, probably even by end of this year, our, our goal is to you know, have all a thousand nodes run by external validators they will propose upgrades to the network. Uh, obviously, there's still a core team right now who will implement the changes. Uh, you know, once once there's a governance vote for upgrades, we'll coordinate and upgrade the network together, uh, just like all the other all the other networks. But yeah, I think we we think right now it's, it's fairly easy to run a validator, but it takes some effort to get delegations to get elected. But in the future, I think we wanted to make it so easy that you know if you if you go on the website, you read this one pager instruction, like anyone can go and run a validator using any of the cloud services or even a Raspberry Pi, someone's running a validator today. And then making it so easy that as long as they engage, you know, a thousand, a hundred people in the community, a thousand people in the community, that they would get enough delegation to get elected. We already have most of that, right? And just keep on building the process so that really there can be thousands of nodes, tens of thousands of people running nodes. I mean, you know, today, again, today, it's like a million users, you know, there are probably hundreds of entities that know how to run a, a validator reliably. But in the future, that, sh that number should be thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of individuals, entities that can run a validator. Right. And what are some of the, the paths to getting there and, and maybe incentives? Yeah. So all the validators have incentives from the network. So either they're collecting the transaction fees or they're getting some of the inflation from the network tokens. And I think we, we really believe that it should be democratized and accessible. So one of the initiatives for us this year is creating DAOs for the project. And one of the DAOs is the validator DAO. And their mandate as a validator DAO is to educate and to bring on many more validators into the network, into the community. And I think, yeah, that, that's actually a great opportunity because there will be a lot of people in the future who would be interested in learning about how to run a validator. It, it's a sustainable, it could even be a, you know, a, a, a sustainable source of revenue for the validator doubt that they are teaching people, they're onboarding people, they're training people 
just like there are so many classes that teach you how to program Solidity, you know, there should be boot camps that can help people onboard uh, as validators. And I think that that may even be a, you know, a full business uh, industry in the future. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. And I guess the only kind of caveat is the hardware requirements right. and, and technical know-how. Yeah, for, for us, it's a, it's a relatively low barrier to entry. You can mm-hmm. Actually, you or I could spin up a, a instance on a cloud provider and run a node within probably a day, actually. Uh, obviously, there's more to, to sync into the blockchain and everything else. But yeah, I think the barrier is becoming lower and lower. Again, someone re- can read a one-page you know, instruction guide, follow these seven steps and be off and running amazing yeah i I just i kind of had just had a a a bit of a a question going going back to the the kind of previous topic of what harmony is trying to do in terms of its interoperability and and bringing people into the space right now we're kind of at like a, a somewhat confusing point i think for i mean obviously you know we've had this overarching expectation of of eth2 launching for quite a long time we've had a lot of other blockchains like Harmony launching and trying to bring some scalability to Ethereum. What's kind of your view as someone that's been in the space for quite a long time? You know, what's your view of where we're at now and and kind of where we're heading? Like, what do you think the ecosystem is going to look like in five years? And like, I think that there, there might be like an erroneous assumption by a lot of people in the space right now, maybe, that there has to be kind of winners and losers. And right, right. Yeah, so I'm just just curious to hear what your view is on that and your personal view and also how you approach this at at Harmony. Yeah, yeah. Instead of thinking about like winners or losers in a binary way, there's probably a spectrum of different projects, different blockchains that may have... Every blockchain will have their own community. They'll have a different kind of vibe in some sense, right? And there will be a lot more use cases around the world. I think, again, I think like... We talked to some partners who, who are very interested in building and they just need to figure out, you know, how, uh, how to do it, how to scale uh, on blockchain. And, and I would say we're not even 1% <laughs> in terms of potential applications that will be launched on this technology, right? It, it, it's like 1991 internet where people can send emails and that's, that's, it's like, yes, we, we put can mail. tokens, <laughs> right, right, right. You, you put like this basic thing like mail, but online and we're still in that phase of, you know, yeah, we can send tokens, we can swap tokens, we can, you know, trade tokens and there will be many more opportunities. And I think all these applications will probably deploy on multiple chains and the chains will be connected via bridges. Bridges will get better as well over time. Like, more trustless, more gas efficient, which is something that we're working on uh, as well. And so in five years, five years is a long time in crypto, although infrastructure does take a while, right? So so I I can see that most of the major chains are connected in some way via bridges in five years. And I can see like a spectrum of probably a dozen chains. It, It probably won't just be one. I mean, one is, it's very hard to say like, one is one chain will you know kind of t- handle the entire world's activities right uh, so i think there'll be there'll be there'll be multiple there may be even regional there'll be specific mm-hmm. purpose like you know recently a lot of my friends are uh, talking about social tokens but for you know and there, there may be chains just for that uh, although we, we think a general the general chain is still probably the best approach you have to have some scale for security and scalability and ecosystem but let's see i i'm I think it, it can be opened a, a lot, but uh, the, the whole industry will grow. All the layer one, I think, will grow bigger over time, over in the long run. I don't know about one or two months, but yeah, in the long run. And, and we'll see. I, I really hope, I, I want to see the day where, uh, you know, a billion, if not five billion people are, are doing transactions on chain. Right, right. And I mean, as you say, we're, you know, we're still early and I guess for you guys, you know, I'm assuming that one of the key kind of parts of the baby steps is, is building out bridges to other chains. So you guys, all, you have a bridge to Ethereum. Um, yes. wh- what else do you have going on at the moment? Yeah. So Ethereum and uh, BSC, mm-hmm. those are the EVM chains and bridges. They already have over hundred million TVL and probably now, but and probably I would say tens of thousands of transactions have already been done on those bridges amazing and then terra we're using their shuttle bridge so you know we're open to all the bridging technology any swap has their own bridging technology that we're plugging into i think because we're fully evm compatible it it becomes easy to bridge to a lot of bridges and a lot of other protocols 
I think the next challenge or the thing for the whole industry to solve is how do you probably aggregate liquidity from all the chains, all the different tokens, right? Now you have right. wrapped everything. Um, everything's a silo. Y- yes. And right, everything's a silo and everything is wrapped and you have to essentially the same asset, but on different chains with some slightly different, you know, n- number on, on the tokens. But yeah, I think I think some applications will start thinking about that problem as well. And we are also working on our cross-chain API so that developers may not need to worry about which chain. As long as you're using assets on any chain that we're connected to, that will be the next kind of frontier. It's interesting. I think we're, we're definitely making strides. And it's it's kind of funny to think about how even today, Windows and, and, and Mac, they're basically not <laughs> interoperable, right. right? Like you can't port your files over or you can't do it easily anyway from right. from yeah. a Windows to a Mac, you know? Yeah. And the system still goes on. The system still right. exists, right? I think we've got to give ourselves a bit of a break in, in the space sometimes and say we're, we're going pretty well. Right, right. Well, the, the nice thing, the difference between that, that analogy and like blockchain is everything's open source. Things People can build. Right, this. right. I, I mean, iOS and Android are not compatible either, right? So... But I see, I see blockchain being a little bit different in that mm-hmm. these open systems will all be interoperable no matter what what it is. I mean, even it doesn't matter if it's Polkadot, Cosmos, even Bitcoin, Solana, like all the EVM projects, they, they will all connect. Uh, I mean, it's already happening. And there are even projects that are aggregating the connectors now, right? They're like right. not just the bridges, but the bridge aggregators, the layer mm-hmm. on top so that you don't even need to worry about which bridge you're using. You just use them and they will, you know, aggregate. Whether, and, and they'll use both types of bridges, the bridges and the swaps, right? Swaps are more centralized or have custody your tokens. But, you know, for small trades, that might be okay. So I, I think that that's the next, you know, evolution. What are some things that you guys are working on that you're, you're pretty excited about? I, I saw that you guys just launched, is it a $300 million <laughs> commitment yes, for yes. the next X years? Yes, yes. So we are uh, very excited about growing our ecosystem. We announced a $300 million ecosystem fund to grow the ecosystem over the next few years. And one of the things that we're passionate about is actually funding 10,000 more builders in crypto, which sounds like a lot of a lot of people, but I think that actually is realistic because you know even one of our hackathons will have 1,000 signups and um, maybe a hundred projects being submitted. So that's a few hundred people, right? And and we want to scale that globally, working with partners. Uh, we work with Gitcoin, for example, really great partner. Dora Hacks is a community in Asia and there'll be more and more. And I think a lot of Web2 developers should be coming in. Mm-hmm. That's, that's our that's our thesis. You're seeing that everywhere. I've seen universities, but <laughs> the number of people in college and high school holding crypto is just continue to increase and people are experimenting. It's so much easier to get started because you can, you know, fork a existing project and experiment on top of that, that it's not like web two development where you have to almost start from scratch and go to uh, stack overflow and copy stuff. Like here you have the full application that you can just fork and play with and you can deploy on another chain. I mean, there's just so many ways for, for really 10,000 more builders to come into the space easily over the next year. And we want to we want to invest and fund all of them. Amazing, yeah. I I, I definitely think that there's going to be some sort of trickle then flood type scenario of the people saying, "Wow, holy crap!" People have been kind of sleeping on this. So right. I mean, it's, I think it's awesome that you guys are you know willing to kind of invest in that. Yeah, yeah. I think I think yeah, the trickle of flood. Uh, people will realize like how much you, how much more you can do in in a decentralized open economy and faster, right? There are there are projects that you know, reach hundreds of millions of uh, market cap within a month, <laughs> which is which is un- unheard of or unthinkable in some of the traditional industries. Right, right. What are some of the applications that you would like to see these guys building on Harmony either now or in a year or two years? Of? Well, I think the, the ones that product market fit now are DeFi, of course. Of, mm-hmm. and, and there's so many things you can do, right? You can of course, DEXs and swaps are some, some of the basic ones, but even uh, synthetics, insurance products. I mean, it, it can. it's still very small, again, compared to the traditional financial world, uh, financial market, like stocks on chain. Mm-hmm. Um, NFTs, of course, is uh, just beginning. Like we have the first wave of NFTs, but you can create derivative NFTs for like, 
you know, if uh, like the board a yacht club, like th there can be derivative of each of those 10,000 NFTs and those can also be, it can become a franchise, right? That's like Star Wars is the old, old concept of franchise. Like Disney is essentially a franchising company with all the brands, right? And mm -hmm. so NFTs could become that. That's one path, of course. There's also things just like where you're rewarded for your intellectual property, like mirror and, and, and where just words and content and just uh, games, of course, will be very big. We, we're already seeing a lot of people experiment with games and different mechanics. Although I, I would say games are still pretty hard to build a good, fun game. And then DAOs, of course, is we think the future of uh, work because it makes... It's a, I would say it's a superior form to a corporation. It allows for much more flexibility and much more human composability. Like you right. can be part of three DAOs or five of them and you can come in and out. You can contribute where you're most passionate and then leave and go to jo join a new DAO. It's like maximizing human potential uh, via this new platform. And something really simple is if you started a company in a traditional industry, right? How do you, if you have founders that are like sitting on three different continents, how do you give, you know, equity and stock and distribute them? It's, it's very hard because you have all these legal entities and, and contracts, but in a DAO, right, that, that problem is solved immediately from day one with, with incentive distribution globally. And, and you can get the best talent in the world to come and, and do this. And so uh, I think, yeah, DAOs will scale from thousands of people to hopefully hundreds of thousands of people even in the next couple of years. Yeah. And I think there's a real fit with millennials and younger generations mm -hmm. as well. And, you know, the world that they inhabit and like culturally for DAOs, you know, like I feel like just inherently they're more of like a meritocracy and you take away that kind of corporate hierarchy and, and everyone is kind of on the same field. And yeah. there's a lot to be said for that aspect of DAOs as well. Yeah, I, I think that's right. Like our parents' generation worked for one company for 10 years we worked, worked up the ladder yeah yeah yeah. and like we 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 are much more flexible working with you know one project for two or three years but then the next generation will be working for two or three projects all the time mm -hmm. and so yeah that's only going to continue yeah i think it's it's kind of like initially or you know with with the ubers and, and and such you know there's a lot of skepticism and pushback around the gig economy as like an erosion of employee rights and so forth but i think that you know, DAOs are probably a push in the right direction, right. right? Right, exactly. One thing that I kind of like to ask is, you know, why Harmony? Why is why is that the, the name that you've chosen for your project? Well, it's really interesting. We wanted to have a name that will last for a long time and can even, well, of course, outlive even, even the team in some ways, right? And uh, Harmony is really about bringing the original vision is to bring collaboration and open consensus to 10 billion people in the world. And I think that's just the perfect name for, for what we're trying to achieve. And it's simple and memorable. So, yeah, I, I do. It. I do like yeah. it, man. It's got a, it's got a ring to it for sure. Harmony for one and all. It's cool, man. Well, you know, we're super pumped to kick things off at Staked Out with Harmony, you know, with the launch of the, the validator. And we're also really excited to, to start building some more exciting applications on top of Harmony. So thanks again for coming on to, to, to speak to everyone and, and tell everyone what you guys are doing. Yeah, thank you guys for hosting. And uh, yeah, we're very excited about the Staked Out partnership. Only good things to come, yeah. Awesome, man. Thanks, thanks a lot, Lee. Thank you, guys. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers.